Hi, my name is Allison, and in this video, we'll explore homeostasis in the nervous system. Before discussing the negative feedback loops within the nervous system, we first have to review some concepts and terminology. The nervous system is a network of nerves and nerve cells that transmit impulses throughout the body. The nervous system contains two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system contains the spinal cord and the brain. Otherwise referred to as a CNS, this system gathers information from nerve impulses that are transmitted from every nerve in the body and coordinates the body's responses. In homeostasis, these two components are the regulating centers of the body. The peripheral nervous system contains the sensory and motor nerves. It transmits nerve impulses to and from the brain and spinal cord. The PNS includes the auto autonomic nervous system, which contains motor neurons and controls involuntary movement. The autonomic nervous system is split into two divisions, sympathetic and parasympathetic. The sympathetic system produces the fight or flight responses that we associate with emergency situations, such as increased heart rate and breathing. The parasympathetic system produces responses of the opposite effect. It helps calm the body down and we use it for ev other everyday reactions. When a neuron is stimulated, it sends an electric impulse down its axon to the following neuron. This nerve impulse is called the action potential. A neuron undisturbed by any electrical signal is called the resting neuron, and it is more negative than its surroundings. This difference between the inside charge of the neuron and the outside of the neuron is called the resting membrane potential. When the body receives a stimulus, a sodium channel on a nerve cell will open to a subsodium, increasing the charge inside the cell. Afterwards, the potassium ion channels open, releasing potassium ions and rebalancing the charges. When the axon potential sends an electric signal down its axon, it hits a synapse that converts it into a different type of signal readable by another neuron. Through this process, signals triggered by a stimulus in peripheral system can travel from one neuron to another to the central nervous system. It is also through this process that our body can maintain homeostasis, or a state of equilibrium, for things such as body temperature. Like with all homeostasis reactions, the deviation from a normal set point acts as a stimulus to a receptor and sends nerve impulses to the brain. Our body keeps balance through processes called negative feedback loop. Let's use body temperature as an example. When nerves sense a rise in body temperature, a nerve receptor is stimulated by this change. The receptor sends the nerve impulse to the hypothalamus, which is the brain's regulating center. The brain then commands the effectors, which in this case are the sweat glands and the skin blood vessels, to create a response. The sweat glands produce sweat, which evaporates to cool the body. The blood vessels dilate so that the heat from the body radiates and releases from the skin surface. The body temperature then decreases. If the body temperature decreases too much, however, it goes through a similar cycle. This deviation is detected by a nerve receptor, which again sends a signal to the control, or the hypothalamus. The brain commands the skeletal muscles to shiver in order to generate heat and the skin blood vessels to constrict in order to reduce heat loss. As a result, the body temperature rises and thus the negative feedback loop is complete. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.